I received in the mail a couple of little Bluetooth boards from IC Station, and we're going to look at both of them in this short video, show you how they work, how they set them up. They're pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and they'll get the job done for many people. Let's check them out. This is the GY18664. It's a, well, they say 10, 15, or 20 watt, 12 to 24 volt. It's going to be a Bluetooth amplifier. I think it's Bluetooth. Is it Bluetooth? Yes, I think, I'm pretty sure it's Bluetooth. And it has a, a function knob on the front. This came from IC Station. So we're going to put this together and uh, try it out and see how this one works. See how it sounds. So it's got um, got a little a knob and a faceplate. And um, a back for it too. So first things first, we'll take a look at the uh, the unit itself. It's got a Bluetooth antenna built in, and the back of it's open, so it's not shielded over top of the antenna. Got a multifunction encoder for volume, and I'm sure changing some of the other parameters and power maybe. Uh, USB C. That would be for connecting it to your computer to use this as a sound card. And of course, a place to put your speakers. As I say, it, uh, they're saying it'll output up to 20 watts, 10, 15, or 20. It's going to be dependent on the voltage being fed. And it can operate from 12 to 24 volts. It comes with an adapter. You can connect it up to a, a power source through directly through wires or just plug it into a standard. I'm going to say, uh, actually, it says 8. 224 volts here right so I'm going to guess it's going to be tip positive as most of these are but we'll verify we'll verify that it is actually tip positive so I'll use the meter because I'm not going to use this adapter cord I'm going to plug it right into an uh, into a power supply if it is tip positive which it should be which it is because I'm I'm connecting one terminal to the the barrel and that's negative and if I go into the tip here it'll be positive so tip positive standard power supply I'm going to dig up a standard 12 volt because that's what I'm going to work it with a 12 volt power supply we'll hook up the speakers and we'll try this unit out okay I've connected it to two two speakers using the positive and negative terminals here speaker two and speaker one and I've got a 12 volt tip positive power supply okay let's get this uh, paired to my phone Oops, better make sure that those wires aren't going to short out or we could have smoke, or we could have some smoke. Okay, the unit should go into pairing mode. Just have to find the. Uh, there we go. It's uh, X I N Y I. That's the name of the device. So now, if I play some music, the music should play. This is my royalty-free music. It'll play through this little amplifier. I can control the volume. I think the volume is probably turned down. There we go. Crank the volume up here. And now I can control it from the control on the front here. If I push down the button, what does it do? It pauses the music. Looks like if I press it again. It plays the music, so that's play and pause. It probably tells me on here what it does. What does it tell me here? It comes with a top and a bottom, which are just little pieces of circuit board. And um, it's got an audio output, as well as an auxiliary input, so you could plug headphones into it, as well as uh, add, uh, auxiliary input that just goes on like that and actually we can probably put that on right now I guess it's better than just having a, a bare circuit board sitting open and then the top cover of course will go on like that and a couple more screws to hold that in place but you can still access the speaker 
screws to attach speaker wires to it. Somewhere here there should be a fourth screw. It's right there. Obviously it's it's still open, right? So it's not like it's uh it's not like it's fully enclosed. The circuit board itself is still open, so you, you still have to be kind of careful that you don't have anything dropping in there. But if it's sitting on a desk, for example, uh, it's not going to be shorting out from the uh, connections on the bottom. Turn it on. It, it, will, it should automatically pair. It did pair to the device it was paired to, so I start playing it again. And if I plug an audio output into here it'll shut off the speaker so then you can use it with headphones like regular headphones or plug it into an external amplifier and then you've got a, just a Bluetooth board that would feed another amplifier so it's easy cheap way to add Bluetooth to an existing system it has an auxiliary input as well so if you want to just use this just as an amplifier you can plug an auxiliary in to it and this will operate just as a small amplifier so say it's rated at uh, they call it 10 15 and 20 watts and it will operate from 8 to 24 volts on 12 volts you're probably going to get close to 15 watts I would think 10 watts would be down at the lower end if you're running it on on 8 watts it might even be 10 watts at 12 volts and you know 15 watts at 19 volts and 20 watts at 24 volts but being a class D amplifier, your power output is going to be directly proportional to the input power. And that would be, I'm sure, rated for 4 ohms. So your power on 8 ohms is going to be less because that's just the way it is. Um, it's based on the amount of current versus the voltage. And they rate everything these days for pretty much everything for 4 ohms. Anyway, I'd say just a very simple video on this, on this uh, little module. It's a Simlink. The link to this one's in the description. They're pretty reasonable. There's not a heck of a lot I can show you about it. It's just a little Bluetooth module with a built-in amplifier, and it also has auxiliary out. So easy way to add Bluetooth to anything that has an auxiliary input. For example, an older car stereo that has some of the older car stereos had the 3.5 millimeter uh, uh, auxiliary input. You could plug a 3.5 cord from here into that dashboard input on your factory car radio, for example, and get Bluetooth through your car speakers. Won't answer the phone or anything, it's just for music, but uh, it's an easy way to do it. This time we're gonna look at the GY18675. This is a, they say, two times 50 watts Bluetooth amplifier board. This is a little kit that you can pick up. This one came from IC Station, much like the other one that we just looked at, but a little more powerful so this one here again it's a this one's a zk502 it has a little more powerful chip on it this one requires a heat sink this one's got a few more features on it it's got uh, your standard uh, power inlet of course which will give you a 9 to 24 volts it has an audio output so you if you want to use this to connect to your existing uh, amplifier or plug in headphones you've got an audio output there it's going to have the volume control here as well this one's a linear volume control, though it doesn't have, it's not a digital control. This one's an actual analog control. You can tell that because it's got the six terminals, three for each channel. As you can see, there's three behind here and three up top. Um, USB input on here. This one here will allow you to plug a USB stick in with music on it. I think the other one just was a sound card for the computer. Um, anyway, um, let's uh, get this one set up. Comes with all the tools you need to set it up, including a little screwdriver. And it comes with a heat sink to put onto the unit because this one here is going to get a little bit warmer than the other. It comes with a button that goes over top of the power switch here. It goes on just like that because it comes with a little case as well, which we're going to assemble and then we're going to test it. And of course, the heat sink has to be stuck onto the top of the IC here. And it's held in place with double sided tape. It comes with one side already attached to the heat sink. Just peel the double sided tape off and press it down over top of the, the IC. Just like that. And that's going to give this unit a little bit of cooling for the heat that will be produced 
if you're running it at maximum power. Here's the, the case. We'll assemble the case on this one and then test it. So we'll attach the standoff. This one here, the, the bottom's got cutouts in it because there is no separator between the circuit board and the, uh, the, the back cover. So they've put cutouts in here so that the, uh, the, the through hole components won't short out. Something to keep in mind that the bottom of it's open. So you might want to throw some tape or something over the bottom, especially if it's going to be sitting on, on a metal counter or metal desk or something, just to eliminate any possibility of something shorting. Just figured I would mention that. So four standoffs and four screws and then the top cover will go on. And then we'll hook up this thing to speakers and I'll maybe even plug it into my sound system and we'll, we'll try it out on Bluetooth. And we'll put a, a USB stick in with some music on it and see how it performs. The uh, top cover just goes on like that, again with four more screws to hold it in place. Okay, speakers are connected here, um, positive and negative. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a BTL output, so you have to have two wires. You can't run them on a common ground because it is a bridged or bridge tied load BTL. Uh, power, say 9 to 24 volts. We're going to use 12 just because that's what I have here. And a power switch to turn it on and off. It'll go into Bluetooth pairing mode. I guess I had the volume turned down so we didn't hear it, but I'm sure that there'd be a beep there. Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth mode. It talks to you. So let's uh, pair this one to Bluetooth. And we'll just do the same as we did before. We'll just search it out here. Okay, this one here, Wuzzy, Wuzzy Audio, guaranteed, because that's the brand of it. Okay, so it's saved. It should be now connected. Okay, there we go. Um, close that down, go back to our music. And play. There we go. This one, of course, doesn't seem to have control of the device because there's no button to start and stop. This was just a Bluetooth amplifier. Control it all from the phone. Got a volume control here. It's actually got some pretty good volume on it. We'll try a USB stick now. I'll just plug this one into the bottom, the one that's all burned. If anybody asking why it's burned, it's because the thing fell apart. It's a Kingston. It was an early one, one gigabyte. It fell apart. And I got tired of trying to pop it back together. Like these were just like press fit together. It kept falling apart. So one day I got, I got tired of it falling apart, and I just grabbed the soldering iron and melted it. So that's what happened there. If anybody's wondering what happened to it, it's just to put it together because I got tired of it falling apart. Okay, plug in the the, the uh, USB. And it should go to it'll go to USB now, and it'll start playing. And since I don't see any way to control this thing when playing USB, I would imagine it just plays everything and uh, then starts over again. So it's. Uh, can't play that either. Um, I would imagine, yeah, it just plays everything. I don't see any, there's no buttons on here to control whether what, what track it's playing. It's just got the power button and it's got uh, your Bluetooth antenna, auxiliary in and auxiliary out for headphones or driving it into an amplifier. So it will play what's on a USB stick. It's just gonna start playing every track that's on there. Load your USB stick with MP3s, plug it in. You know what this would be perfect for, right? You got a music on hold system. You plug this into your telephone system and put your messages or your music on a USB stick and just plug it in and then it'll it'll feed. And I'm, I'm thinking that this is probably going to control the level. Let's try it out and see. This I'm sure does control the audio output level. So if we plug in an auxiliary output to it, it'll shut off the built-in speakers and feeds it through to my auxiliary output for my amplifier. And this does control the level.
and then unplug it and we're back to the built-in. And it go back to the Bluetooth and I can start it up here. So that's the uh, that's the unit. See both of these units, I've got the links to both of them. They are available from IC Station. I figured I'd show you them both at the same time because otherwise I'd have two really, really, really short videos. Anyway, there we go. A 50 watt amplifier and a 20 watt amplifier. Thanks for watching.